What's going on guys, Striker here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to download vehicle mods for Grand Theft Auto V on the PC. And uh, sorry if I sound a little weird, I'm actually sick right now and I can't really do anything about it, but I do want to make a video for you guys uh, on showing you guys how to do this. It's kind of complicated the first uh, couple times you do it and a little overwhelming, but if you keep practicing you'll get it and uh, eventually it, it just becomes second nature and it's not too hard. So, uh, you're going to need quite a few things for this, uh, and uh, you're going to need OpenIV, and this is what you use to mod all, all of GTA. Any mod you're ever going to use is most, or is probably going to use OpenIV, and if it doesn't, then it's probably just a drag and drop into your root files, but you're always going to need OpenIV, so um, all these links are going to be down in the description, but all you need to do is, is just download this. And uh, it looks a little sketchy, but just click download. It'll go right there. And then uh, you're going to need Visual C++ redistributable, pa redistributable packages for Visual Studio 2013. Uh, so download this, uh, you just, I, I guess, and then next. And then you're going to download that. And it's simple. All you have to do is drag it onto uh, your desktop and install it. And you're also going to need this, which is a uh, .NET Framework. So you're going to download this uh, as well. And I believe if you're on Windows 8 and Windows 10, uh, I don't think you need this. However, it's still good to download it just in case, because I don't know for sure. Um, and next you're going to need ScriptHook5.NET, as well as ScriptHook5, or ScriptHookV if you want to call it. These are two different things, so you need both of these. Don't get them mixed up. You're going to need this, and it's going to take you to this website. You just click right there, and you're going to need this, and all you have to do is click right here. And now, this is optional. Uh, with Script Hook, I forget which one it is. I believe it's just Script Hook 5, um, not Script Hook 5.net, but with Script Hook, there uh, comes a trainer, and if you don't know what a trainer is, it's basically a mod menu. So you can spawn in vehicles, you can change your character, you can save vehicles, you can do a whole bunch of stuff, you can uh, mess the world options. It's basically like a, a much more in-depth mod menu. So you just are going to click download if you do want it. If you don't, that's fine. Uh, Script Hook comes with one, although it's not as clean and organized, although they both do the same thing. So uh, after you have all this, uh, you're going to want to find the vehicle that you want. So I'm going to be using the BMW uh, M4 uh, Ryzen body kit. I guess that's how you say that. And I actually love this car. Um, it's really nice, and I... I, I really like the car, so I'm going to be going with this one, uh, although one thing to keep in mind whenever you're using vehicles and vehicle mods is that um, with vehicle mods, there are add-ons and then there are replacements, and replacements do pretty much what they sound like. They replace a vehicle that's already in the game, so say the Zentorno or the Lamborghini. Uh, if you were to put in the Centenario here, it would probably, uh, if this was a replacement, it would probably replace the Zentorno. However, if you add it on, it puts itself in the game as its own car, and it doesn't mess with any other vehicles. I'm going to be showing the add-on one, because the replacement is actually really easy, and I don't really think I need to uh, explain it. However, if you guys really want me to, I can uh, explain it in another video. So, you're going to want to find your vehicle. Uh, I already have mine right here, uh, this one. I've actually already got it downloaded as well. It is already on my desktop and everything. But after you have all this, you're just going to want to uh, take all of your files and drag them onto your desktop. I already have all of them in a folder somewhere, so I don't need to do any of that. Uh, this is the vehicle uh, mod, and it's going to come in a zip file, so you're going to need to have either WinRAR or 7-Zip or whatever. And you're going to take the files and, whoops, wrong thing. So, uh, you're going to download the Visual C++ and the .NET Framework. And after you've done that, you should end up having three files at the end. After you've downloaded your OpenIV as well. So, you're going to have ScriptHook5.NET, ScriptHook5, and then the Enhanced Trainer, which is optional. You don't really need to have that one. 
So what you're going to want to do is, is you're going to want to set up your OpenIV. So I'm going to go ahead and open up OpenIV. I've already set it up, but whenever you first run it, it's going to take you through a general installation and everything. It's going to ask you what language. It might ask uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to download other programs. Make sure you say no because. Uh, this does come from a sketchy website, so it might try to download harmful viruses. However, this program itself is safe. So once you've uh, opened it up and everything, you, you'll see all these files with all these uh, x64s and a whole bunch of other ones. I know this looks very overwhelming and everything, but it's very simple. Most of the time, you won't really be dealing with all of these files. It'll mainly just be your mods folder, your scripts folder, and maybe one, of, one or two of these x64 folders. So, uh, before you do anything, you're, you're going to want to go to Tools, and then you're going to go to ASI Manager. And in the ASI Manager, you're just going to download these three things. They take a couple of seconds, and basically they make sure that uh, whenever you're modding your game, it doesn't completely mess up your game. So, say you make a mod that, uh, or say you get a mod that messes up your game. Instead of it being downloaded into your directory where you have to go and search for it, you can go to your mods and everything like that and go through it and everything. And uh, it's going to be easier for you to just go ahead and delete the whole mods folder if you need to instead of going in and finding specific files because then your game will work if you just delete this. It's kind of confusing, but after a while you'll get it. So after you have downloaded all the things in the ASI manager, you're gonna, you should see a folder called the mods folder. You might need to restart your uh, open IV although I don't think you will so you've gotten all this ready and now after you've done that you, sh you have your mods folder and everything so you're ready to start dragging and dropping so first we're going to start with scripthook.net so with this all you really need is two files all of these come with readme text and these oh whoops these are um like oh whoops wrong one sorry these are all uh, like uh, tutorials, or not tutorials, but like uh, telling you how to do it. So all you're going to want to do is, is take the script hook 5.net.dll and the .asi and drag and drop them into here. Uh, also, just so you know, uh, if you're going to ever mess with any files in here, you need to go into edit mode and it'll let you edit files. So we're going to take script hook uh, 5.net. Uh, .asi and .dll and go ahead and drag and drop them in. I don't need to, however, because I have them in uh, in my directory already. So you're going to take these two files, drag them in, that's all you have to do. Now script took 5, uh, not .net, but script took 5, you go to the bin. So if you don't have the enhanced trainer and you're not planning on putting the enhanced trainer in, you can drag and drop all three of these in here. However, I have the enhanced trainer, so I don't want to do that. So you just go scripthook5.dll, drag and drop, and then put 8.dll and drag and drop. And after that, you're good with that. Uh, if you don't want to do the enhanced trainer, you're good. You can stop now and wait until uh, we go into the car installation. However, if you are going to use the enhanced trainer, which I definitely prefer, uh, keep watching. So with this, all three of these files are simple. All you have to do is just uh, copy them and drag and drop them into here. It doesn't really matter if you have this file in here or not, but I prefer putting it in there just, you know, just because. Uh, so now after you've drag and dropped all three of those files, or all three sets of files into here, uh, you're ready to mod. You're ready to do whatever you need to do to uh, get cars in, script mods, map mods, a whole bunch of stuff. So now that you've done that, let's go ahead and get into the uh, cars. So... Most car mods, uh, depending on whether they are add-on or replacement, it doesn't really matter, uh, they will come with an installation readme text or a readme text or any type of text that will tell you how to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and follow it for you guys just so that you guys can, uh, can get a feel for what you need to do. So it says create a mods folder in your GTA 5 directory, copy the update folder and put it in the mods folder. So in the mods folder, we have the mods folder, uh, it says copy the update folder so uh, I I prefer doing this in uh, file explorer just because it's uh, easier just to copy it and it's a little bit more difficult to do in open IV but all you have to do is copy the update and put it in the mods uh, I also would put in 
X64i and X64e just because uh, later on you might need those for other things so what you're going to want to do is just copy update x64e and i and you're going to copy all three of those into the mods folder and once you have that uh, you'll see there's update i and e these other ones c g v and w you don't have to worry about those because those are for other mods that aren't pertaining to this video so like i said update x64e and x64i that's all you need to have in your mods folder so now you can follow the instructions in the description. So advanced installation guide. It says advanced, although, I mean, there's only one type and it's not too hard to do. So first of all, you're going to want to open up your OpenIV and navigate to the DLC list.xml. So this one gives a directory and you're always going to remember that before uh, this little directory, if it doesn't say mods, which this one does, it means mods. So you're always going to want to go into your mods folder update update.rpf common and data and now on here it's going to show a bunch of files all you need to do is find dlclist.xml which is right here and you're just going to drag and drop it onto your desktop so uh, if you don't already have it set to where uh, uh, these are or .xml files are opened up in the notepad you can just go to open with and then open with whatever but I already have it so you're going to open this up it's going to show you a bunch of codes, and just like everything else in this tutorial, it looks a little overwhelming, but you're just going to copy and paste this line here, and you're going to go there, and you're going to go press enter, and then tab twice, and then you're going to click control V. It'll show your, uh, it'll show your line of code there, and you can click control S, and then I X out of it, and I always like to make sure before I put it back in OpenIV that I actually did put it in, so it says R mod M4, R mod M4. So we're good there. Now you can always drag and drop a file back into it, but I am sometimes afraid that I might drag and drop it into another folder and lose it. So I always use the safe way and click the little plus sign up there. And then you are able to scroll through your directory thing and open. So now that we've done that, you'll see that R mod M4, that line of code is on there. So we're almost done. There's only one more step, and this step is super simple. So now you're done with OpenIV. You don't have to do anything else on there, and we're also done with... Actually, we're almost done with this. So you're going to go to your file explorer, and you're going to go to wherever your GTA 5 root directory is, or wherever the root files are. So uh, I have it through Steam, so it's going to be Steam Library, Steam Apps, whoops, Steam Apps, Common... Grand Theft Auto 5 and then this is where it all is so now it says second navigate to mods so remember we're gonna go to mods update time 64 and then DLC packs and it says create a new folder and name it R mod M4 now you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you copy this letter for letter and make sure that anything that is capitalized is capitalized and anything that is not is not meaning there cannot be any difference between those words that are right here and the words that uh, the file is named and that sounds a little confusing but excuse me you're gonna make a new folder and you're just going to name it what this says so r mod m4 so it's going to be r mod m4 so just like that now that you've done that you need to open it and drop the dlc.rpf file into it so open this up and right here is the dlc.rpf uh, don't try to open it though because it is as you can see 19 million uh, whatever the hell you would call these which is a lot so or 20 million actually so it's not gonna open without crashing so you can just go ahead and drag and drop the dlc.rpf into here and you are done so you're gonna go ahead and close everything out now as of now your vehicle should be uh, downloaded and everything and I like to just go ahead and get rid of all the extra files that I've already done so now that I've done that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and load into the game and show you guys the vehicle alright guys so now that you're in your GTA 5 you're just gonna wanna open up your trainer um, and to do that you're going to click F4 and you will have this and this is the trainer if you don't have um 
if you didn't download the enhanced trainer, yours will be a, a different looking. However, you should still be able to navigate. And to navigate, you're actually going to use your numpad, your number pad. You're going to use 8, 4, 5, 6, and 2 to navigate around. Uh, 5, you're going to use to select things. Uh, six and four you're gonna use to go through pages. So right here. There's uh, two pages You're gonna use four and six to go through those and uh, actually these cars are kind of getting on my nerves. So I'm going to Turn off traffic and pedestrians So now that you've done that everything is uh, You should be able to navigate through it easily and zero is what you use to go back so I click zero here, it takes me back to the main menu. So now let's go ahead and see if we can spawn in that vehicle. You're gonna go to vehicle spawner, and there's already a bunch of preset vehicles. There's cars and then all the different types. But you're gonna want to go to enter name manually. And after you've done that, you're gonna go and you're going to spawn in the vehicle. As you can see here, here is the vehicle. Um, sometimes if you haven't uh, installed the mod correctly, you will actually uh, not be able to get it and it'll say uh, whatever you typed in it will say uh, uh, it'll say it cannot be found and in which case you have to go back and make sure you did all the steps correctly and if you really feel you did uh, and you can't figure it out go ahead and go uh, back to the website where you got the mod from and go into the comments and ask the people because uh, in the experience that I've had using GTA 5 uh, mods, which is the website I got this vehicle from. The whole community has been very generous and nice, especially whenever I have questions. Uh, also, just so you guys know, the speedometer on the right side, you won't have that because that's a separate mod. It's a... Uh, uh, I, th I believe it's actually a script mod, which uh, those are a little bit more complicated to download. However, I will be making another video in the future on how to download them. So, let's say that you want to... You want to... Uh, customize this vehicle but you don't want to drive all the way to a uh, uh, auto shop or whatever you want to call it open up your trainer and you can go to vehicle options and you can go to modifications now you can add all performance upgrades and add all armor upgrades if you do add all a vehicle all add all available upgrades it's going to go to whoops excuse me it's gonna to go to every second or every last uh, option on all of these and it's just gonna choose that for you so I'm gonna go ahead and go through this on my own and uh, decide which ones I like To save the vehicle, like so, uh, say you don't want to have to go through customizing it every time you get it, but uh, you don't have a garage purchased yet in campaign or whatever, you can go to create new vehicle save, name it whatever you want, I'm just going to name it BMW, and click enter, and now it's here, so if I go ahead and spawn a different vehicle, so I'm going to go ahead and spawn this one, so as you can see I've got this car here, now if I go ahead and spawn the BMW, it will give me the same vehicle that I just customized and everything uh, everything that I put on it, everything that I customized about it, everything is the exact same uh, thanks for watching please like and subscribe and I'll talk to you all later